Welcome to Annuity News Now. Recent studies show that America is on the cusp of a retirement crisis for different reasons. My guest is Christine Mark. She is president of Prudential Retirement. Christine, it's a great pleasure. Thanks for sharing your time with us today. My pleasure. So can you elaborate on uh, the elements of this retirement crisis? Sure. Well, I mean, as you said, the traditional pension plans are disappearing because they are um, uh, very costly from an employer standpoint. Defined contribution plans, were, which have been around since the 80s, um, you know, were designed as supplemental savings plans. They were not designed to be the core, uh, the core plan delivering retirement security and retirement income. And uh, but with DB plans going away, they now need to play that role. And so um, we have we have issues with regard to the fact that they are, I think, still seen as retirement savings plans. And then we have an issue with respect to their availability to the entire working population. Um, you know, they tend to be particularly among small employers, employers who have less than 100 employees. You don't find them creating uh, 401k plans because of the cost and the fiduciary liability associated with them. So, you know, we have put forth and, and suggested um, solutions to these gaps because we are concerned as we look ahead at what retirement security um, might look like in the in the U.S. in the years ahead, um, particularly with health care costs rising as significantly as they have with interest rates where they are. We do see this as a, a real uh, social and economic challenge for the country. So we know that Americans aren't saving enough uh, and they're living longer, which on the surface looks great, but that can cause problems. Right, right. It's a double-edged sword in some respects. <laughs> Well, you know, I think the if I come back to the point I was making about defined contribution plans now being the primary savings vehicle for for so many Americans, the issue is they don't. Uh, people have not traditionally correlated how much they have to have saved in order to have that plan deliver uh, a, an income stream that's going to last for you know 25 or 30 years, which is the typical retirement now. And so what we are very focused on is first of all reframing the um, reframe, reframing the plans and having them uh, considered as as retirement income plans as opposed to retirement savings plans. And what we uh, there are two dimensions to that. The first one is behavioral. The second one is is solution oriented. But from a behavioral standpoint, what we find is when we get participants to think about the retirement income. Um, outcome, if you will, of where they are in their DC plan. And we do this through calculators and through um, income on statements and so forth. They realize that um, they are falling woefully short of what they're going to need to live on. And we've seen actually significant increases in contribution rates to uh, 401k and 403b plans when people start thinking about it in terms of what kind of an income it's going to produce as opposed to what kind where the account balance is. So the the framing uh, um, opportunity, I think, is an important one, and there's some legislation now that's been proposed to um, ask providers to lay that out for uh, individuals who've been doing that for, for several years. Then the other point here is to bring guaranteed income solutions into these DC plans. They haven't typically been designed with that as a as an option. You'd have to roll over to get... Um, into a product that delivers guaranteed lifetime income. We brought a solution to market back in 2007 that brings um, an annuity-like option, it's guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit, mm -hmm. into the DC plan. We have over 7,000 plans now that are utilizing this. And what we find is that in those situations, um, it protects against market risk in the 10 years leading up to retirement, provides guaranteed lifetime income, and so people in their pre-retirement years are um, actually, they're saving more. They are maintaining diversified portfolios from an investment standpoint instead of moving to a completely conservative um, investment position, which is problematic if they're going to live for another 25 to 30 years. And so there, right now, however, there is not as much 
I'll say take up on these options because plant sponsors are concerned that they do not have what's called safe harbor status Mm -hmm. from the Department of Labor to put these kinds of options into their plants. They want fiduciary coverage, if you will. They want to know it's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, But we see it as a very important feature of making these plans retirement income plans as opposed to just savings plans. Yes, and and I think the other aspect here is we we have to design solutions Mm -hmm. that um, uh, are you know, defined benefit like in nature in terms of providing guaranteed income, but having solutions that offer more flexibility and control than traditional structures. Because if you look back on, you know, the last several years, traditional annuities, the the, the real drawback there is that it doesn't give people uh, the access and the control over their money that they want and that they perceive they need, particularly if they're going to have a healthcare event or some other kind of situation in retirement where they need to get to their money. So we tried to design solutions that give them more flexibility. Would it be safe to say, uh, Christine, that uh, education or more education about retirement products uh, available is needed? Yes, I think that is part of the gap here. Um, I also think employers have not necessarily focused on the workforce management issues that they may face if their employees can't retire because they haven't saved enough or because they don't, you know, and they're not really clear on what, they don't have a a tool or an option to support a, uh, you know, a replacement paycheck in retirement. So down the road, I think employers are going to become more aware of the fact that people are going to work longer. It may There's probably a cost dimension to that, and then there's a talent dimension because, you know, you have this millennial generation entering the workforce, and, you know, they they may not have the same job opportunities that they thought they would have if you've got people working into their 70s. (laughs) Christine, would it be safe to say that more education is needed here? Yeah, I mean, I think that, I think, you know, I'm hoping the time has come for, um, this is a very important risk management tool. And, um, I mean, it's the only product structure that um, really uh, solves the longevity risk issue. And um, and we know that with, um, you know, I just saw something yesterday that um, the uh, expected, the life expectancy on, on men and on women, there's a, another round of potential improvements to mortality tables that are going to predict you know, that, that people are going to leave even longer, you know, another couple of years for men and another couple of years for women. So it, it, there is a very real risk here, and annuity product structures can, 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 can address that risk. Now, how does Social Security play into all this? Yeah, well, I think what we've observed is that, um, uh, that the typical behavior seems to be file for benefits at 62. <laughs> Because you know, I got I got to start taking it as soon. There, people are afraid it's going to go away. I think in some instances, and they they have this mindset of, well, if I start at 62, I'm going to get more out of it than I would if I waited. And they don't really understand the intricacies of Social Security, such that you know there is a planning dimension around how you take Social Security, and you really can end up with a much better, a higher benefit um, for for you and your spouse if you do the planning associated with who should take benefits first and at what age. Um, so, you know, this is an area that I think there is still a lot of opportunity for education and clarity. Um, and it's going to be a very important one, particularly for people who don't have a lot more than Social Security mm-hmm. to understand so that they can, in fact, get the maximum benefit out of it. Christine, let's talk about women for a minute. Uh, They typically will outlive their spouses sometimes 10 to 15 years, and they probably need more money in retirement than they think they do. Well, they do. I mean, the typical, um, again, I think historically anyway, women have tended to step out of the workforce, you know, to have children, to take care of elderly parents, whatever the case might be, more so than men. And so when you look at the benefits that they accrue, whether it's in a DB plan or in a defined contribution plan, um, combined with, I think, still um, uh, pay scales that may be not quite as um, as lucrative as men, that that combined effects means that they have less there 
um, to draw on when they retire. I mean, the good thing here, though, is that I think women are, tend to be more advice seekers. Mm -hmm. And so educating them on the importance of savings and educating them, getting their minds wrapped around the fact that taking care of themselves is, in fact, very important, mm -hmm. <laughs> as opposed to um, uh, focusing more on their kids or, or you know, it being the uh, being the 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 individual who tends to sacrifice for others, right. you know they're going to need they're going to need the savings in retirement, and and similarly, so you know the social security strategies are important for them, uh, particularly. Christine, finally, do you see with the popularity of annuities growing that they will become more user friendly? It, yeah, I think so. I mean, I cer certainly the um, the uh, transparency has improved, and I think. You know, that's a trend that's here to stay. When you bring these kinds of options into uh, retirement plans, there are, um, you know, requirements that around fees and fee disclosure and so forth that are very much front and center. Part of this is educating people, too, on the fact that there is a cost associated with insuring against risk. So if they think about, you know, okay, they buy homeowner's insurance, so that you know, if their house burns down, they have they have it covered. Well, you know, if they live longer than they think they're going to, it's really great to have the I'll say the insurance that they will still have an income. So trying to I think probably put some analogies to against the kind of risk that is being managed here and the fact that it it does there is a cost associated with it, education and so forth is is important. Um, you know, and I also think that product complexity is, I think we're getting simpler, that the, the options you find in retirement plans versus retail annuities are simpler just because in a retirement plan, you don't have the benefit of having an advisor there in most instances to take you through the, all the dimensions of the product. So it has to be simpler almost by, by definition. Um, but I also think that advisors are getting more comfortable and more familiar with the product structure and the benefits of the product structure, too, because, because their clients need them. All right, Christine, thank you. My pleasure. Anytime. My guest has been Christine Mark. She is president of Prudential Retirement. I'm Scott Drake. Thanks for watching Annuity News Now.